What's good? What's good? I am back. Yours truly, the one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast. Um, crazy night last night. Crazy night last night. Um, two playoff games. Both of them pretty much a blowout, but one was an extreme blowout. And I think we just saw the second coming of Larry Bird last night. But before we get into that, let's get into a word from one of our sponsors. Are you a musician looking for music marketing and promotion? Then look no further than Promo Palace LLC, your one-stop shop for all music promotion services. Services include Spotify playlist pitching, YouTube video promotion, record pool promotion, blog placements, radio airplay promotion, SoundCloud promotion, and much more. With over 2,000 customers and over 10 years of experience in online promotion, Promo Palace LLC is a company you can trust. For more info, please go to promopalace.biz. See you there. That's right. That's right. You need market promotions. Please go to promopalace.biz. Get your market promotions at promopalace.biz. Need SEO, press releases, blog placements, playlist pitching, TikTok influencers, Instagram influencers, and much more. Check us out, promopalace.biz. Um, let me pull up last night's NBA scores. Let me bear with me. Um, first game, game, I watched both games. Um, Boston beat Milwaukee 109 to 81. Pretty much evenly. Or easily, my, my bad. But that's the thing. Boston took whatever, whatever the defense was giving them, and which was just a lot of wide open threes. Let's see. You got three points from Wesley, Math- Wesley Matthews. Giannis gave you 25, but he was a negative 20. 20. Giannis said 25 and 20. 25 and 20. Um, I mean, he you got 21 from Holiday, but they really need a middle 10. They really need a middle 10. Jason Tatum gave you 23. Grant Williams gave you 27. 19 from Jalen Brown. 11 from Marcus Smart, who also had 10 assists and 7 rebounds. Almost a triple-double, along with a steal and a block. Only on two turn- turnovers. Jason Tatum had a bunch of turnovers, but, you know, he shot very, very well. 50% from the field, 55%. Um, yeah, so Celtics... Looks like the Bucks are not repeating, which is the hardest thing to do in any sport is to go back to back. We going back to back, not this year. And that's the thing. The same night on the same night, both teams that were in the NBA Finals last year both got eliminated in the game seven at that. You know what I'm saying? So congratulations to Boston Celtics advance to the play to Miami Heat. That's going to be a very interesting, tough series. Um the shocker of last, last the Suns. I mean, literally by halftime, they only had 27 points. You know how many points Luca had by halftime? 27 points. Luca literally had the same amount of points as the whole Phoenix Suns team combined by halftime. Um and you really had three, you had the three, the three best scorers for the Mavericks showed up. You got 24 from Brunson. Along with six rebounds, two assists, one steal. You got 35 from Luca, along with two steals, four assists, and 10 rebounds. And that's another thing. Luca is the best rebounder on the Mavericks. He is the best rebounder on the Mavericks. Um, like the last few games, I mean, Dwight Powell only got five rebounds. Dorian Finney Smith, five rebounds. That's power forward in the center right there. Maxi uh, Keebler. Um, Four rebounds. I mean, yeah. You had 30 points from Spencer Dinwiddie. We gave you 11 for 15, five from seven for threes. I mean, and, and I, I'm pretty sure we can go back and listen to my episode before this last one, but I definitely recall saying that Spencer Dinwiddie shows up. The Mavs win this game. And what happened? Spencer Dinwiddie showed up. And Luca did Luca like things. And Luca was – the best player in the series. And that's another thing I want to talk about. 
Devin Booker was fourth in MVP voting. Luca was fifth. There's no way in hell that Devin Booker is should have been over Luca. First of all, Devin Booker got DeAndre and Chris Paul and Mikael Bridges, who was Defensive Player of the Year runner up. Um, Luca had Brunson and just got Spencer Dinwiddie half through the season, halfway through the season. Um, Devin Booker is overrated a little bit in my mind. He doesn't. He's not a guy that's going to take dominate a series. You know. He could, you know, he could. He's an efficient scorer. He could put up a lot of points, but he's not going to dominate a series, man. You know, he's just not. I'm sorry, he's not better than um Jason Tatum. Um, he's not better than Jimmy Butler. There's a lot of dudes that he's not better than. He's not better than Luca. You know, he's not better than Giannis. He's not better than Dur Durant. There's so many dudes. And B's better than him. Um, Joker's better than him. I mean, I don't know that even Devin Booker's top 10. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know that Devin Booker's top 10. He's still not even better than LeBron right now. LeBron had an amazing season. I'm sorry. He's just not. And um, Jay Will made a point of saying that Luka Doncic is the best player left in the playoffs right now. Even better than Steph Curry. Um, I have to think about that for a second. Let me think about it. Better Jason Tatum, better than Jimmy Butler, better than Steph Curry. That's the that's the top three left. I agree. You know why? Because Luca can out rebound all of those guys. He can facilitate an offense better than all of those guys, and he can shoot better than probably two of the three. Two of the three. Two of the three. Um, Phoenix, the season's over. Let me, you know, let's analyze this. Do they need a – if I'm Phoenix, what do I do? Chris Paul, I mean, Chris Broussard made a great point. It was like follow the time with Chris Paul's locker until he turned 37. I mean, he literally turned 37 during the series. And last few games, Chris Paul was just fell off the face of the – Earth. If I'm Phoenix, um, do I run it back? You probably can. They probably can run it back. I would. I, Bismack Biombo got to go. Him coming as a backup for DeAndre Ayton ain't gonna cut it. Um, Landry Shamets, I. Right, but I mean, most of these guys could go. I would keep maybe camera the cams, Cam Johnson, the Cameron Payne. Everybody else can go. Um, they probably need a. Third wings, they need a they need a real good wing score. Bridges is good, but I might with Trey Bridges or Crow and Crowder, one of them. And that's another thing they got Crowder and Bridges as your fours. That they're that's not that's a small squad right there. When you got Jay Crowder playing power forward, Mikael Bridges small forward. Jay Crowder is nowhere near a power forward. He's a small forward. I understand they got small ball lineups and stuff like that, but DeAndre is a seven footer, you know. And then you go to straight Dre Cap Crowder power forward. They probably need a better power forward. They probably need to find. They need somebody like a. They need like a Bobby Portis type of player. And as far as the Bucks go, they probably just need to run it back. They didn't have their second best player on the team. Second leading scorer, second best player for this whole series. Chris Middleton plays this whole ser this series. This might be a totally different series. It really might. And look, Giannis's lack of shooting, you know, mid range and three, is really why they lost. They needed Chris Middleton. And you know that's the thing. The Bucks didn't beat. They didn't beat the best. They beat the defended champs, but Chris Middleton was not there, so they didn't beat the best. Um, let me get into reacting to a couple of TikToks. I'm not going to probably stay on this one long. Actually, before I do that, pull up the NFL.com and see if there's anything worth talking about. Uh, uh, uh,
Um, oh yeah, which McCollum just signed with the Saints for the NFL. Um, Jarvis Landry just signed with the Saints. The Saints are definitely going all in. They got Michael Thomas coming back. They got Jarvis Landry. They got another good receiver. They got um, Alvin Kamara. If Jam, I mean, if Jameis Winston can't win games, it's Jameis Winston that can't win games. I mean, and they got a good defense. I think they see it happening. I mean, a lot of because a lot of good players left the NFC and went to the AFC. I mean, especially quarterback wise, Russell Wilson left the, the NFC, went to the AFC. Um, we had a receiver in. Devontae Adams left the NFC, went to the AFC. Um, the Colts got Matt Ryan from the NFC to the AFC. A um, lot of movement. The AFC really beefed up, man. Really beefed up. And if I had to pick on the NFC, like the favorites right now, the top two teams to me probably favorite is Rams and Buccaneers, Rams and Buccaneers, and I got Green Bay at third because Aaron Rodgers is that bad man that he is. I think they'll still find ways to be better than the Cowboys. Still interested to see what the Eagles could be with all the moves they made. Um, Vikings, I mean, Vikings, Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson, and and Dalvin Cook should be be a hell of a lot better than eight and nine. And I think they had a lot of injuries last year anyways. I'm looking at these other teams. I mean, Seahawks and 40, 49ers too. I would say 49ers might, 49ers might be third, third or fourth on the list. But that's the top four probably. Rams, 49ers, Buccaneers, and Green Bay. I mean, Saints, I still don't know what they're going to be with Jameis Winston, even though they got the weapons. I don't give Atlanta no chance. My Carolina Panthers ain't going to do much. Detroit Lions. Um, Detroit Lions made some moves. They should be better than three and thirteen next year. Um, Chicago Bears. Uh, I don't. I ain't giving them no shot. Washington Commanders. No shot. New York Giants. And really, the New York Midgets right now. Just interested to see what the Eagles can be. AFC is stacked. Denver Chargers, Raiders, Chiefs. Um, Titans did get rid of AJ Brown, so I don't know. They might have end up giving up their division slot to the Colts because Colts should Colts really should be in a position to win win that division. But Titans were twelve and five last year, and they still got Derrick Henry. So Bengals, Steelers, Browns, Ravens—that's gonna be a tough division, especially if Deshaun Watson plays. Lamar Jackson comes back. Um, see what Mitchell Trubis Mitchell Trubisky should be better than Ben Roethlisberger was last year, and they got. Um, my non cousin Kenny Pickett, and I definitely want to see Kenny Pickett succeed. Anybody with my last name, you know, I do want them to succeed. Uh, then in, I mean, you still got the Bills, Bills, I mean, Patriots still, were 10 and 7 last year. Dolphins should be better. I mean, Tua, if two, if that's the thing, if Dolphins don't win no games this year, two is the problem. You got Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, um, and Jets should be better, man. Jets should be a lot better. AFC is really, really tough. NFC is wide open, and that's why the Saints get Jarvis Landry. I mean, they were 9-8 and eight last year. They win. They win like two more games. They win the playoffs. They win two more games. They win the playoffs. And – Jarvis Landry and whatever they did should get win them two more games this year. Definitely should. Um, I right, let me get into another word from one of our sponsors, and now I'm gonna react to a couple TikToks that I downloaded off of Libs of TikTok. Another one. Gonna have you coming back for more. But go get it while it's hot. Before it be sold out in your stores. That 
That's right, that Dizzle. Check them out. Dizzlebrand.com, a mixture of agave tequila, cognac, orange liquor, mango mix. Go to Dizzlebrand.com. You go order the Dizzle Brand merchandise under the store. They got hats, t-shirts, hoodies, fresh as hell. Also, if you 21 and over, you want to order your very own bottle or bottles of Dizzle Brand premium luxury liqueur, go to Dizzlebrand.com. Click on our locations. Click on the top three one of the, oh, excuse me, one of the top three links, and you go order your very own bottle. Shipping and handling is included. Dizzle brand premium luxury liqueur. Do you dizzle? Yes, I dizzle. I got a bottle on my refrigerator right now, and it's getting low. Got to re up. Um, so definitely check them out. I run Dizzle Brand's Facebook profile, their Facebook uh, fan page, and their TikTok account as well. And Dizzle Brand is also a black owned business. And you saw Mike Dizzle was in the video as well. The guy who created Dizzle Brand, DizzleBrand.com. Check him out. I, I'm going to um, react to a couple. Of, I'm going to start reacting. That's the thing. I'm going to start reacting to more, to more of these videos that online. Like, I don't really do a lot of reacts. So I'm going to start doing a lot more reacts to videos and stuff like that. So I'm going to let this one roll and I'm going to react that this question would probably come up sometime soon just because of the video and the topics that I cover but let's break this one down so intentional weight loss so you purposely saying I want to lose 20 pounds is fat phobic and you might be like what oh my goodness I'm not trying to be fat phobic but you are you're being fat phobic to yourself why do you want to lose 20 pounds it's probably to fit into something smaller. It's probably so people treat you better. It's probably for all the reasons that fat folks are shamed simply for being fat. So by continuing to perpetuate that, right, seeking intentional weight loss, we are contributing to our Okay, so... She basically said losing weight or wanting to intentionally lose weight is fatophobic. When I think of this, even the concept of that, I'm gonna give you a uh, I'm gonna give you a few phobics that come into mind to me. Um, how about healthy phobic? <laughs> That's one that comes in mind. Healthy phobic. Healthy phobic is the number one that comes in mind when I think of somebody saying losing weight is fatophobic. How about you're healthy phobic? Um, how about smartophobic? Smartophobic? That's another phobic that comes in mind when I think of somebody saying losing weight is fatophobic. Um, how about um, attractive phobic? Attractive phobic? Yeah, that's another one. Um, intelligent phobic? Um, that's another one. Um, common sense phobic? Um, that's another one. Um, how about live a, live a longer life phobic? Um, yeah, that's another one. I think a lot of phobics. When I think of that, I mean, that's like the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Um, and I'm not saying there's not people that are attractive that are overweight, but it's less attractive. Uh, it's less healthy. Um, it definitely shortens your life it doesn't prolong your life longer what's going to prolong your life longer is actually losing weight and getting healthy this idea like you know what like if anybody should have a fear of anything it should like fatophobic that's a good fear to have as far as i'm concerned um it's a great fear to have the fear of getting fat, that's a great fear to have because it means you fear, you know, being unhealthy. You fear being unattractive. I mean, I'm sorry, man. People that are just super overweight are not attractive, man. Some of them might have cute faces, but for the most part, you know, it's not attractive to be super overweight. There's a difference between thick and 
chunky and fat, you know, just overweight. Like, I, yeah, this is, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Losing weight is fatophobic. Oh, uh, no, that's smarter phobic, intelligent phobic. It's healthier phobic. It's living a longer life phobic. It's common sense phobic. It's, yeah, I, it's amazing to me that people even think this, like, you know, that's why I have to, that's why this is the Paul Pickett podcast, AKA triple P, AKA the common sense podcast, you know, cause, um, it's common knowledge, man, for that's common knowledge for tens of thousands of years that being fat or overweight is unhealthy and it is less attractive and it shortens your lifespan. And another thing is most of the people dying from COVID, a lot of them are overweight. A lot of them are overweight and a lot of them are unhealthy. And that's the thing, like, the older people get, the le- you know, people exercise less and less the older they get, you know. I need to start exercising more. I mean, I walk every day, you know, and I try to do um, curls and, and I got dumbbells. You know, I need to do way more sit-ups, um, way more push-ups. But it's, I also have a former dislocated shoulder, so it's not as easy for me to do uh, push-ups. And I did gain weight by – breaking a leg and a foot and being in bed for six months, it, it definitely made me less healthy, more overweight, and probably took some time, some years off of my life or months or something, you know, which is not cool at all. It's not cool. You know, like, that's that's all I, I'm sorry. First thing I think about when you tell me losing weight is fatophobic, I think you're healthier phobic. You're smarter phobic and you're intelligent phobic and you're common sense phobic and you, yeah, on to the next one, man. On to the next one. All right, so I'm going to pull up another TikTok and um, let it play and then I'm going to react to it. Xenogenders as a gender that could not typically be described with terms such as masculinity, femininity, neutrality, androgyny, things like that. It's more of not how you relate to a particular gender um, experience, but more of how you relate to things. For example, cake gender. Um, I know a few people who personally use this. Um, It's typically described as them feeling light and fluffy or sweet and warm. And it's not something that you could typically describe with the terms masculine, feminine, androgynous, etc. Another example of cake gender would be if someone All right, let me. You know what I think when I hear these things? These people make this stuff up. They're making it up as long as it as they go along. They just make this stuff up as they go along. Um, they really do. They just make this stuff up as they go along. And because there's no way, like. Everybody that classifies themselves, whatever she says, Zena, whatever, they can. I bet they all got a hundred different definitions for this stuff. I bet like every def- every person's definition for this transgender stuff is just it's all different. It's all made up. It's fairy tales. It's imaginary. It's bogus. See, because this is the thing I realized. My sister, both my sisters are teachers. And my youngest sister kind of schooled me on something because she has 14-year-olds. And um, a lot of these kids that call themselves transgender or non-binary only do it because it's the cool thing to do. It's the trendy. It's the trendy thing to do. One thing I know about trends, only a certain amount of people follow trends <laughs> which is usually a the not the majority it's usually the minority 
like sagging pants, for example. It's the minority that's sagging pants, not the majority. The majority of people in the United States and the world are not sagging their pants, not intentionally. They're wearing belts and wearing their pants up you know, as what people will call properly, you know, and however you want to wear your pants is however you want to wear your pants. Not my apartment, though. You ain't going to come in my apartment sagging your pants. You're going to turn around and go pull them up or you just ain't coming in, you know, because in my apartment, I'm the dictator. I'm the conqueror. I make the rules, you know. So, um, yeah, I, that's what a lot of the stuff they just make up as they go along. Most of these people got so many different definitions for the same thing that it's all bogus. Like, that's the thing. You can't have a hundred definitions for one thing. You know, like society has defined things with one definition or maybe two at the most for thousands of years. And now people want to just, you know, redefine what a man is, redefine what a woman is. Well, guess what? Guess who ain't redefining that? Animals. We're the only ones that try to redefine laws of nature. And guess what? Mankind doesn't get to redefine laws of nature. If mankind wants to redefine mankind's laws, guess what? You could go ahead and redefine mankind's laws. But guess what? When we're talking about the reproduction of any species, we're talking about females, males, gender, sexual intercourse, laws of nature dictate that shit. People don't get to dictate, people don't dictate something that the laws of nature have clearly dictated for hundreds of thousands of fucking years. You could think you do in your little fucking fairy tale world bubble, but the rest of us aren't going to follow in line with your fucking shit bullshit. You know, and I wish I had the video to play, or I couldn't find where the the guy. And it was clearly a a, a black um, a black guy goes into a school and complaining about his grandson being dressed up in a dress. And he first one of the first things he says is, "Yo, we don't do that transgender stuff here." Because one thing that I never fly in my book is non-binaries. You're never going to make me accept the fact that. There's somebody who's not male nor female. That's a it. That's a it. Your thing, a it. Because you're either male, female, or hermaphrodite. And hermaphrodite means you're both male and female. It doesn't mean you're not neither. You're nor neither nor. You know, so, yeah. And that's another thing. Like, homosexuality has been around since the beginning of mankind. And my neighbor, you know, he's gay, and I talk to him all the time. I'm not homophobic because I don't fear no man. I fear no man. Warrior, swing swords like Conan. I've been hit by a car. There ain't no man on this earth or no woman on this earth that can hit me harder in a car. I ain't scared of no man or no woman. I don't fear no man or no woman. So I don't got no phobias and no people. So I talked to my neighbor, and we talked about this. He said, he. I clearly told him out. My opinion, homosexual males and females are not in the same boat as transgenders and non-binary people. And he agrees. He does not put himself in that same boat either. It's a whole different boat. Because being a homosexual or gay means you have a sexual, a mental, or physical, or emotional attraction to a person of the same sex. Being transgender is totally different. It's it's because some transgenders are not even attracted to the same sex. Some of them are attracted to the opposite sex. And at least transgenders choose male or female. But even tra if transgenders put themselves in the same boat to non-binary, you're not even they're not even in the same boat. Non-binary is its own boat. Transgenders is its own boat. They're all their own separate boats. Floating upstream with their own separate agendas. And another thing is, you're not going to tell me that gay people, transgenders, or non-binary people have been oppressed 
like the African American men and women were. You're not going to tell me that. That's horseshit. Because we weren't enslaving people just because they weren't gay. Just because they were gay. We didn't do that. That's horseshit. Bullshit if anybody tries to tell you otherwise. And being gay and homosexual was frowned upon in so many countries for tens of thousands of years. It's still frowned upon in some countries. So it's still not acceptable worldwide. We just started fully accepting it here in the United States, you know? And now you want to throw transgender and non-binary and xenomorph and all these other made up. And I, I see like these made up pronouns and names. I seen a video where, or a news thing where at a school, they're trying to punish a kid because he wasn't calling another kid by the proper pronouns. First of all, first of all, how the hell is anybody supposed to know your freaking pronouns if they don't even know you? If you're just a complete stranger, just because you're in a class doesn't mean we're friends. Just because we're in the same high school class doesn't mean we're friends. Doesn't mean I want to know your pronouns, first of all. First of all, let's decide if we're friends. Because if we're not friends, I could give a rat's ass about your pronouns. I could give a rat's ass what you call yourself if we're not friends. I only care about my friends. I don't care about complete strangers that I know don't give a shit about me. That's another thing. You got to stop forcing people to care about people that they should, that don't care about them. Caring and love is a two way street. It goes both ways, motherfuckers. If only one person loves the other, it's not fucking love. It's delusion. It's delusion. Plain and simple. It's a two way street. Love and caring is a two-way street. I don't care about people who don't care about me. I only care about people who care about me. I only love people who show love for me. I only respect people who show respect for me. If you don't respect me, why would I respect you? These things are two-way streets. They're not one-way streets, you jackasses and morons. You know? But, um, yeah, they make this shit up as they go. There's so many pronouns out there nowadays. Nobody can fucking remember them all anyways. It's enough that you got to remember everybody else's names. A hundred people, diff hundred different people's names. Now you want to remember all their different pronouns and they're all different. I'm like, no. I just don't think that's ever going to fly in this society. You know, like if you want to force me to say your pronouns, then I'm going to force you to stay the fuck away from me. Get the fuck out of my face. Burn the fucking road. And if you get too close to my face, trying to force me with some pronouns, you're going to get bit smacked and punched in your motherfucking mouth if you get too close to me. You know, because every there's a thing called uh, privacy uh, space. You up in my face, we got problems. So, yeah, anybody thinks they're going to force pronouns on me, stay the fuck away from me. Don't, I don't want to fucking know you. I don't want to be your fucking friend. I don't give a rat's ass about your first name, your last name, or your pronouns. Because I'm not falling for that bullshit. Because they make this shit up along as they go. You know, and you're going to open up a can of worms with this pronoun shit. Because if you start forcing people to call people by pronouns, you ain't going to like what you're going to have to call me. You're going to have to call me God Almighty your majesty, your lord, your highness. You have to call me everything that I could think of that puts you beneath me. Just because you want to bring this force people, just because you want to force people to know a complete stranger's pronouns before they even freaking meet them. And as like, we're supposed to just guess out of the 100,000 pronouns, oh, you know what? I bet your pronoun is uh, jackass or moron or stupid fuck or idiot or, you know, dickwad. I mean, we're just supposed to randomly guess? Yeah, th th you're going to open up a can of worms with this, this pronoun bullshit. And it's not going to go so well when you try to force people to 
call people by pronouns. Because then you're going to be forced to call me whatever the fuck I tell you to call me. If not, we're going to have fucking pronoun problems. We're going to have motherfucking pronoun problems is what we're going to have. If you try to force me to call you whatever you want me to call you, you don't call me God or King or Your Highness or Your Majesty. We're going to have pronoun problems. That's what we're going to have. So, yeah, I just think y'all need to stop making up this shit along as you're making this shit up as y'all go along. How about y'all decide on three or four or five fucking pronouns instead of five fucking million different pronouns that complete strangers don't even fucking know the fucking pronouns to get begin with. And like we're supposed to randomly know whose pronoun is what. Ooh, let me figure it out. Duh. Let me guess. Uh, what your pronoun might be. And that's another thing. These motherfuckers change their pronouns every day. Their genders every day. Like, we're supposed to fucking know that. What you want to be on Mondays and Tuesdays. You know what I am Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? A self-employed businessman. Every day of the week. A podcaster. A promoter. I don't change fucking job titles. I don't change my names. I don't change my pronouns. And I don't change my fucking gender every day of the week like these fucking jackasses. As long as... They're just making shit up as they go along. And guess what? I live in the real world. I don't live in fairy tales. I don't live in Game of Thrones where there's dragons and and stone men and and white walkers and you know, no, I don't live in a fairy tale world. I live in reality, the real world. I don't live in a world where people just make shit up as they go along. It's not happening, not flying. Um where we at? We're like 37 minutes in. We're going to pull up a another commercial and we're going to call it a show. Right, this your boy, go. the one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett podcast. AKA Triple P, AKA the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and more. Please Can't check me out three to four days say. a week on my video podcast on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Rumble. And check out the audio version on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, TuneIn, Stitcher, Slacker, iHeartRadio, Player FM, and much more. Peace. See you there. Once again, I want to thank y'all for tuning in. This is episode 142, Paul Pika Podcast, a.k.a. Triple P, a.k.a. The Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and more. Also, don't forget the audio version of my podcast. Go to Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, TuneIn, Stitcher, Slacker, iHeartRadio, Player FM, and much, much more. Make sure you follow me on Spotify. Follow me on Apple. Definitely follow me on Rumble because the video is already monetized on Rumble, unlike YouTube. YouTube, which requires 4,000 watch hours and 1,000 subscribers. Once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. Peace, and I'm out.